March 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 21 from the New Testament. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all offered their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything she had to live on. Now while some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you are gazing at, the days will come when not one stone will be left on another. All will be torn down. So they ask him, Teacher, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that these things are about to take place? He said, Watch out that you are not misled. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. And when you hear of wars and rebellions... Do not be afraid, for these things must happen first, but the end will not come at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise up in arms against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and famines and plagues in various places, and there will be terrifying sights and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you, handing you over to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will be a time for you to serve as witnesses. Therefore, be resolved not to rehearse ahead of time how to make your defense. For I will give you the words along with the wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will have some of you put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name. Yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Those who are inside the city must depart. Those who are out in the country must not enter it. Because these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing their babies in those days, for there will be great distress on the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away as captives among all nations. Jerusalem will be trampled down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth nations will be in distress, anxious over the roaring of the sea and the surging waves. People will be fainting from fear and from the expectation of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man arriving in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to happen, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the other trees. When they sprout leaves, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. So also you, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day closed down upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will overtake all who live on the face of the whole earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that must happen, and to stand before the Son of Man. So every day Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, but at night he went and stayed on the Mount of Olives. And all the people came to him early in the morning to listen to him in the temple courts. God, today I come to you and ask for special prayers for those listening. Some of the people listening today are struggling. They're going through something really hard that's affecting their heart and affecting their lives and possibly affecting their families or loved ones. And they're struggling. 
God, I just ask that you remind them of the hope that they have in you, that they can turn to you today and you can wrap your arms around them and hold them tight as they go through whatever it is that they're going through. You never said that our heart couldn't hurt or that we wouldn't cry, but you promised us that you would always be there with us to go through all of these things. And today is just such a perfect example of that hope that we can find in you, especially through your son's incredible sacrifice of dying on the cross for us. I love verse 28, but when these things begin to happen, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Sometimes we get so caught up in what is happening here on earth and it not to invalidate anything anybody's going through because it, at the time it feels like a really, really big deal. But if we can keep our eyes on what is eternal and what is going to happen to us because we are your sons and daughters, if we can hold on to that hope, I believe we can make it through anything with you. Throughout the whole Bible, there's people rejoicing and glorifying your name and worshiping you all the way through to Revelation. I love in Revelation when it says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come. And his bride has made herself ready. So today, God, I, I can't even imagine what some, some people who are listening to this right now are going through. Things that I suspect I've never gone through and perhaps wouldn't even understand, but I know that you do. And I know you see everything that they're going through. And I know your heart aches for them. God, I just ask that you be with them today. Show them the hope that is throughout the entire Bible, throughout your entire word that you've given to us. Not only the hope throughout the, old, throughout the whole Old Testament of your consistency and your justice, but the hope we can find in your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, on our salvation. So we could have that hope so we could look past these momentary things and we could look to eternal things. God, I just ask that you put people in their lives that will pray for them. That will hold them accountable or hold them up or help them. Whatever it is that these people need at this time. And that the people you send their way are obedient to whatever it is that you've called them to do. God, I just hope that if they need somebody to talk to, they'll turn to you. And then you'll send them to one of your people here on earth. They can talk to me. They can talk to somebody in the group. But let them know that they're not alone, that they don't have to go through this alone, that there is hope. And what seems really, really big isn't in comparison to the gigantic God that we have that will take care of all things. God, I just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.